What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that all of you are having an amazing evening. It's a beautiful Monday, clear skies out there, okay? So I am watching Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. This is the sixth episode titled Naked Ambition, okay? And this episode, a lot of people have said on social media that it's their favorite. I'll say it's definitely getting interesting. Like we're getting to know the characters a little bit. They've been in the house for a while and we're getting to see their personalities a little bit more. So the the episode opens with Jasmine. She's actually crying. They're sitting at, at a restaurant eating dinner, the whole cast, but she's crying because she said that she feels isolated from her friends, you know, that she's the only one that's married. And as the episode progresses, I can see why she's crying. And I feel like more so it's because of who she's married to and the situation that she finds herself in versus just, you know, being married. Because if, I, and I'm not married myself, but I feel like if you are married, I've been engaged before, um, but if you find someone that you truly love it shouldn't be that emotionally draining, okay? Her husband, unfortunately, is extremely controlling, just beyond controlling. So after they leave the restaurant, you know, the next day, Shanice comes back and she says that Bria has warned her about what she, you know, what Alex basically um, found out in regards to the situation with her ex-boyfriend and, you know, all the stuff about her potentially, you know, stalking him and trying to get a restraining order on, on her. And so she realizes that that's why Alex is basically paying her dust. Okay. So she moves on from him. And then we go to the confessional with Simon and Bria, and they discuss their um, camera work with, you know, a really popular site, but they said that they only are doing, like, lingerie photos and, you know, the site where people sell feet, and, <laughs> and so Bria's like, you know, you can just go ahead and cut that out. I don't necessarily need that in there, but the shady producers, of course, left it in. <laughs> And speaking of Bria, so then we have her dog Milo, who makes a boo boo on the in the basement, right? And so <sighs> Silas, he is exhausting. I'm sorry. He moves. <laughs> he, he walks past Bria's door to go complain about the mess to Preston, and Preston's like. You could have just either cleaned it up or told Bria to clean it up. Like he was like, you had to walk past her door to come in here. He's like, y'all gotta grow up. And I I 100 percent agree, okay? Because Silas, you know, I don't know if he is thinking that. I mean, I know he's from Africa. I know he's from Liberia. And he actually said that he came from a refugee camp, which, you know, his mom sent him to the United States to work hard and be disciplined. Kudos to him. Kudos to mom, right? However, <laughs> comma, semicolon, okay? The gag is he looks to everybody else to solve his problems and complains about everything that everybody does. And I don't know if it's because he comes from a refugee camp. I don't know if it's because he was in the military. I don't know if it was because he pledged a fraternity because he was complaining to, you know, his LB, his line brother, Preston, about, about the situation in the basement. And as soon as Bria finds out, you know, boom, like she goes, she, you know, picks it up, cleans it up, scrubs the carpet, makes sure that it's all clean. And everyone is like, okay, nobody else is making a mountain out of a molehill except for Silas. Like, I feel like he is just perpetually unhappy, insecure, controlling, and it's just, it is exhausting. Like you want to, you want to know the real, I think that's why Jasmine was crying, sobbing, boohooing at the table 
talking about how she didn't want to be isolated from her female friends. That, to me, was a cry for help. Okay. Okay, Chow, and speaking of a cry for help, so they end up splitting up, you know, the men go and um, have a guy's night out and the girls have a girl's night out, okay? And even before they split up, you know, Silas is trying to put down ground rules with Jasmine and yada, 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 okay? He's like, you know, you can't accept drinks and all this other stuff. Come to find out that one... He's telling Jason, you know, nice guys finish last and, you know, basically no one will want you if you're this, that, and the other. And Jason just had a three-month-old baby. You know, he's like, well, you're not going to be intimate with anybody. He didn't say that, but I'm keeping it family-friendly over here. And um, he's just trying to project all these insecurities on Jason while Jason is like, what are you talking about? You know, like he's he's like, I can, he's like, I'm an attractive guy and I can pull pretty much you know, a good looking chick whenever I want to, which I believe him. You know what I mean? Silas just has some really deep rooted insecurities that are just constantly spilling over. And he's projecting those onto his wife, his line brother, his housemates, basically. So, and speaking of, okay, um, he didn't have on his wedding band. <laughs> like, Everyone's like, wait, hold on. You got all these rules and you're clocking everybody else and you don't even have your wedding band on. He's like, oh, well, you know, I was I was playing sports and I took it off. And then come to find out there's two other girls who um, sent them some drinks and the guys are like, oh, no, 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 no. You're not about to do free shots over here when you just told Jasmine and everybody else, you know, yelling at the girls for having shots. Like, no, like stop being a hypocrite. You know what I mean? If you're going to try to dog everybody and try to be the hall monitor of how everybody else lives lives their lives. Mind you, these people are in their 30s, okay? Like, we're the same age. Like, get it together, you know? But um, these are, you know, good and grown adults, okay? You're going to try to monitor what everyone else does, you got you to gotta stick to that same standard, my mans, you know? Like when they get back, Nick is telling him, you know, go put on your wedding ring. So he goes, he puts on his wedding ring. So the girls are, you know, they come back, they um, go into the hot tub and Shanice is feeling extremely free. So she goes and um, dis disrobes, unrobes, un she's unclothed, okay? And um, she, yeah, takes off all her clothes and decides to skinny dip. <laughs> and when it was just, you know, all the girls, okay. I mean, not really okay, but if they're okay with it, then, you know, they like it. I love it. However, when Bria's uh, boyfriend, Simon, and the rest of the guys come back, I would think that anyone with, you know, any kind of common sense would put on their clothes, you know, but... Nope, not Shanice. And so <laughs> Bria is really upset that she is parading around naked in front of her boyfriend, which makes sense. You know what I mean? So, and then again, it shows Silas and Jasmine basically having a fight. Silas is, you know, telling her what to wear. He's mad that she burned his breakfast. He was mad that, um, you know, when he was out with the guys, he was like, well, she's over here acting like it's, you know, like we're on vacation and I'm used to a routine. You are on vacation. You're at Martha's Vineyard. Child, that's exactly why I think Jasmine was crying. I really do. And so the episode ends and it shows us a, pre a preview of next week where Jordan is actually the one that starts crying because she says that she's been, you know, over-sexualized in the house. Like, I mean, her and Shanice, they go play tennis with Amir and Alex, which looks like a lot of fun. They're both, you know, they're all athletic. And they were flirting with each other, Alex and Jordan, at least. Well, Alex said that Jordan was looking kind of thick. <laughs> so and she was like, what, huh? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, maybe he was doing more of the flirting. And I think that 
Jordan wants to be taken more seriously. Yes, she's a beautiful woman, but she wants someone who peels back the layers of the onion and really gets to know her for her personality and not just her beauty because beauty fades. And you want someone to love you for who you are as a person, right? So she is really upset and she starts crying. So my heart goes out to her. Um, but I'm looking forward to next week's episode. You guys drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about this episode. And, you know, if you're enjoying the show as much as I am, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you later. Take care, aces. Bye.